And it's time for the 8.30 High Beam here on the BT Morning Show. And today we've got Abigail Raber from Safe Communities Coalition. How are you this morning, Abigail? Hi, Brad. I'm great. Thank you for having me. It's always good to talk to you. And uh, just on a personal note, um, you getting a little more immersed now in Safe Communities Coalition. Uh, do, do you look at the group now and, and see that it's uh, got a good focus and uh, really, really trying to help, I, I guess, uh, reach the goals? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think our group is wonderful. Um, we are always growing and always looking for more people to join our group, too, to bring new ideas. Um, but, yes, I think we do. Um, our members do a really good job of sharing our messaging and, you know, giving us new ideas and things to try and improve. Well, that's that's good to hear. And yeah. so I, I would have to agree with you because you're the spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with you anyway. Um, so tell us a little bit about what's going on. We're trying, and the weather's uh, given us a little setback here, but we're trying to transition to spring, right? I, I, I hope so. I sincerely hope so. So. With the warming weather, you know, we do talk about things um, that the weather obviously impacts. So as you might have noticed, the last week with a lot of sunshine, you might have seen some motorcycles out. Um, so we do talk about motorcycle safety in the warmer months. Um, so I did want to kind of note on that. Um, in Tuscarawas County, obviously, all the rural, rural roads, we do have um, quite a few um, crashes that we worry about with motorcycles. Mm -hmm. Um, so a couple things that we, we like to note with motorcycle safety is obviously just being aware of your surroundings. Um, I know a lot of people come through the county that aren't from here, and they might not be familiar with our winding roads and the different routes and such. Um, so please just make sure if you are on a motorcycle, wear your helmet, you know, use common sense and be as safe as you can. Have eye protection if you don't already. Um, and if you see anybody else on the road with a motorcycle, watch out for them as well. Very true. And uh, yeah, like you said, with the eye cover, that road road rash can be pretty pretty oh, tough. Oh, absolutely, yes, yes. Road <laughs> rashes, road rash is awful. So yes, just cover yourself best you can. Um, you know, it it doesn't take much to get road rash, and I can't imagine what that would be like falling off of a motorcycle mm. or getting into an accident. Yeah, not good. Take any precaution you can. Is you know <laughs> kind of what I tell people that I know that ride motorcycles. <laughs> well, good. Yeah, good thing. <laughs> so what else uh, is going on? I know the. Uh, National Highway Safety, they always have some campaigns going on, which we uh, pretty much follow here, right? Yes, of course. Um, so April is actually the National Distracted Driving Awareness Month. Um, so distracted driving has become a leading cause of vehicle crashes on our nation's roads. Um, this is something that most of us probably know, but it's kind of a double standard. Um, so why I say that is because most of us have experienced at one time in our life being on a phone while we were driving. And you kind of have that moment where you're like, oh, I probably shouldn't be doing this. But a lot of us have a, lot, have a really hard time putting our phones down or not talking on the phone while we're driving. Or a lot of the times younger drivers will text while driving. Um, as we know, it is illegal and we are not supposed to do that. But many drivers are guilty of like a double standard. Um, in a study in 2018, NHTSA actually released the AAA Foundation reported that while nearly 96% of drivers believed it was extremely dangerous to read a text or email while driving, four out of 10 drivers actually admitted to doing so within 30 days. Mm -hmm. Which means uh, good for everybody. But but I think of uh, proms and such coming up, and especially with younger drivers who are not as experienced, it's maybe yeah. even more important. Yes, absolutely. Um so, yeah, exactly. With prom coming up and stuff, we have newer and inexperienced drivers driving at nighttime. They're having a good time with other young people in the car. Um, so our, our biggest recommendation for that is try to avoid all the extra unnecessary distractions. If you have a parent or an older sibling or somebody who's willing to drive you or in your friends or your prom date or what have you, you know, to and from prom or to a restaurant or something, try and take advantage of that extra driver that might have more experience. Um, Another thing that you could do if you are having issues with distracted driving is put your phone on do not disturb, put it on airplane mode, put it in the glove box, the trunk, just somewhere out of reach so that way we can eliminate those unnecessary distractions. Right. Some of us older people uh, didn't have phones in the car and we remember how that actually can work. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if it's out of sight, out of mind. That's a good bit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Maybe too much, but no. Um, so I, it's um, almost the quarter of this year is over yes just almost so um not that we're keeping a thumb on the stats and this and that but uh are we are we doing all right as far as uh, crashes and fatalities or are we uh, getting a little bit behind yeah so um our crashes have increased unfortunately um so 
I know last month I did say that we had a little over 300 crashes so far in 2022. So that number has increased. We have had 465 crashes this year. Um, now, that number has, has jumped up quite a bit. Obviously, with warmer months, we might be able to pinpoint a few of those causes. However, our fatal- we have had two fatalities this year. So that number hasn't changed too significantly quite yet this year, and I'm hoping it doesn't. Um, but with the increased weather, we have seen, um, we have seen a few more crashes this, uh, this month especially. Um, so we're sharing all that messaging and trying to, trying to just promote safe habits when you're in the car. Um, and especially to our young people, too, um, to try and, you know, keep this number uh, under bay. Absolutely. Uh, you mentioned we're always looking for uh, more people to participate. Somebody might say, well, what kind of qualifications do I need to be on the Safe Communities Coalition? So oh, yeah. are there any? Absolutely. So there are actually no qualifications to be on the Safe Communities Coalition. Anybody can join. And I seriously welcome anybody to call us and ask questions or give us suggestions. Or if you would like to be in on our meetings, um, the Safe Communities Coalition does meet quarterly to discuss events and outreach and campaigns, and you can learn a little bit more about what we do um, and where you might see the things that we do. Um, so, yeah, I encourage anybody to join. You can give me a call at the health department. Um, my extension is 111. You can contact the Safe Communities Coordinator, Natasha Yonley. Um, her extension is 171, or you can shoot us an email, and we can get you on those calls. All right. And uh, Robert Bray from WBTC is on the coalition has been for quite some time yes he has he is a wonderful asset for coalition well we we'd like to think so <laughs> <laughs> yes he he has done very well with us and we definitely appreciate his time <laughs> well, we appreciate your time thank you well thank you um, so much next month and we didn't discuss this ahead of time but next month the uh we'll talk to you on the fourth okay. uh, monday all right that sounds wonderful okay thanks. abigail thanks so much yeah you too thanks that's abigail raber the a spokesperson for Safe Communities Coalition here on our 830 High Beam on the VT Morning Show.